I know that uh, everybody's kind of getting geared up for uh, Christmas and Hanukkah holidays and the New Year's and, and all those things. So I appreciate y'all taking your the time today to, to come and attend this webinar. Um, this is kind of a rescheduled event. Originally, we had this scheduled for last month, but had some things come up um, and was unable to, to hold it. Had to go work with some clients on some issues and things that came up. So we'll do that. So what we're going to be talking about today is uh, ArcGIS Pro and projects and how we work with those in ArcGIS Pro, what projects do. This is a continuation of our ArcGIS Pro uh, webinar series, and we will continue to have have these and, and record them and make them available online uh, through various means for folks to go back and, and um, work through and, and use as a, a tool. I am uh, your instructor today or, or host, um, uh, Trip Corbin. Uh, I think many of y'all uh, probably already know me, but for those that don't, I've got 20 years plus of GIS mapping and surveying related experience. I actually started out as a land surveyor uh, working with my dad. So I've uh, pulled chain, uh, literally pulled a Gunther's chain for those that may know what one of those are, as well as use modern survey equipment, total stations, uh, GPS and, and all that uh, before migrating into to GIS. Um, and uh, once I got into to GIS, uh, you know, that I really found my love and my passion in there because it was combined a lot of things that I, I enjoyed with surveying as well as IT. I was an IT guy for a while, got Microsoft certifications and, and so on uh, with that. And I ended up to one package. So I am the CEO and co-founder of EGIS Associates. Uh, we're a GIS services firm that work with uh, city, county governments, nonprofits and private sector companies to help implement GIS technologies, provide training support, application development, and all those kind of uh, good things. I'm um, very active within the, the GIS profession. Many of y'all probably see me posting on the, the multiple email lists I, I'm on, trying to help answer questions, provide guidance and support. Um, I'm currently the president-elect of ERISA International. So very involved with ERISA as well as some of the local chapters like Georgia, Florida, um, Carolina, uh, Alaska, and, and others. I'm uh, very excited that. And also a member of the Southeast GETA board. So uh, again, continuing to do that. We got multiple certifications. Uh, some people say there's probably not a certification I didn't like, but um, I've got my GISP. Uh, I've had that for... Uh, Gosh, what am I, 11 years or so now? I forget, 12, something like that. I just renewed this this year, so for the second or third time. Um, on that one, I'm also a certified floodplain manager. That's what the CFM is. And I hold multiple ESRI certifications as a desktop professional, desktop associate, enterprise system design. Uh, as was a former ESRI certified trainer as well, at least until they showed uh, they closed that program at the uh, end of last year, but I had been a certified trainer for about eight or more years uh, through that. And I have my CompTIA certification as a technical trainer. That's a CTT+. Uh, my most recent accomplishment is writing a book. I wrote a book called Learning ArcGIS Pro, and you'll find some of the content uh, from this webinar within that, that book, and it was just published uh, last week my very first book so very excited to have that out there um, that okay so uh, in this webinar uh, we're gonna hopefully introduce some concepts of, of a project within ArcGIS Pro what is a project how do they work what's the structure of a project uh, we'll talk about items that can be found within a project and then we'll look at how do we create and use project templates uh, within ArcGIS Pro, and we'll, we'll fit all that in. So hopefully we'll run this about 30 to 40 minutes uh, of information and demos, and then follow that up with about 15 minutes or so of question and answer. We'll just kind of see how it goes. I'm kind of somewhat informal uh, with, with all this. Uh, if you do have questions, please post them in the question section uh, of the, the application here. Uh, again, if you have general comments, put those into the, the chat, 
and I hope uh, appreciate all of your your inputs and things on this. So, for those that may not be familiar with ArcGIS Pro, this is Esri's newest desktop application. It is a brand new app. It's not an update to Arc Desktop, so it's not an update to Arc Map or Arc Catalog. It is a completely new, built-from-scratch application uh, by Esri. It is 64-bit, and what that enables is it to utilize all of the modern har hardware we, found, we find in current computers. Uh, so it'll, eat, it'll use as much RAM as you can throw at it. Okay, uh, The minimum is four, at least eight uh, uh, gigabytes of RAM is recommended, but it, it can use as much... Uh, as you can put in there, the, the more RAM, the better. Um, I'm currently running 16 on my uh, 16 gigabytes on my laptop that I run it on, and it does uh, a great job. Also, by being 64-bit, it supports hyper-threading. So, with your modern processors and all their multiple cores, they're in there. ArcGIS Pro can actually utilize all that. Your Arc Map and your Arc Catalog were all 32-bit. So it had limitations on the hardware it could utilize, uh, being 32-bit. It, it wasn't hyper-threaded. Uh, it could only recognize up to 4 gigabytes of, of RAM. didn't matter if you had more. So this moving to that 64-bit architecture really opens up uh, Arc Pro to, to really taking full advantage of modern computing power we have out there. The other nice thing with Arc Pro is it does support both 2D and 3D maps. So within ArcGIS Pro, we can create both 2D and 3D maps without extensions. Okay. So in the past, with Arc Map or, or with ArcGIS for Desktop, if you wanted to generate a 3D scene or view, you had to have the 3D Analyst extension and use Arc Scene or Arc Globe in order to to do that. Um, with ArcGIS Pro, that's no longer a requirement. Now, if you want to do 3D analysis, that's a whole other thing. Um, that does require an extension, but just building a 3D uh, scene or view uh, you can do with an Arc Pro without any extension. Okay, uh, It does make use of projects, which, which we'll be talking about in the, the remainder of this webinar. It supports multiple layouts, like the old Arc View product used to do. So we can have three, four, five layouts with an ArcGIS Pro. Uh, and it also utilizes this new interface, this new ribbon interface. Looks very similar to Windows, I'm, I'm sorry, not Windows, uh, Office, Microsoft Office, or the current versions of AutoCAD. Anybody using uh, that should recognize it. And uh, that makes the interface a little bit more intuitive, especially for new users, uh, because it's an interface that they are somewhat used to by following that with those uh, intelligent context tabs that will appear, depending on what functions or features you have selected in the interface. So it's, it's a pretty neat little product. Now, having said that, uh, I will caveat all that by saying ArcGIS Pro is still very much a work in progress. Um, it is still lacking uh, a good bit of functionality, such as um, data-driven pages. It doesn't support that yet. Uh, generation of reports and graphs and charts is not supported in there yet. Uh, use of topology or geometric networks is not supported in there yet. Uh, and there, there's a few other things out there. So it's, like I said, still very much a work in, in progress. And Esri is focusing a lot of uh, attention on that. And we'll talk a little bit more towards the end of this about what, what the next release will contain. But we're currently at uh, ArcGIS Pro 1.1. So it's version 1.1.1. Uh, Three ones um, is the most current uh, version with all the, the patches and, and whatnot on there. So, again, a very powerful product even as it is now, but uh, still a lot of work to go. I, For those of us that have been around a while, you may remember when Esri first released ArcGIS, and they started out at 8.0 as the first release of ArcGIS, and it really wasn't until 8.3 that it became a <clears throat> really stable and viable product for main production work. Um, I would equate the current version of ArcGIS Pro uh, to 8.2, 
you know, ArcGIS 8.2 is, is kind of where it, it sits right now for, for equivalencies, those that may remember that. But that's that's kind of where it is. But like I said, they, they continue to, to, to improve and, and add and, and build on it. So do a real quick poll to see who uh, are those of us that may be old enough to remember uh, Arc, Arc View GIS. So how many of y'all have worked through, I'm going to launch this poll and see how many of y'all have actually used or worked with the old Arc View GIS. <clears throat> Okay, and the numbers are coming in. Got about 89 people. I've got 90% responded. Uh, if y'all want to, you can keep uh, responding. But um, um, hang on. Good, good responses here, about 91% uh, on that. Um, so it looks like set, but with the majority of y'all, 79% have used uh, to 80% the old ArcView GIS product. Uh, about only 20% have have not. So I'm going to close that poll down. So that, that's good. Uh, the majority of y'all have. That gives us a good frame of reference to, to come off of uh, because... ArcGIS Pro makes use of project files very similar to the way the old ArcView GIS did. Okay, so the old ArcView GIS used to use project files. They were called APR files, and in a single APR, we'd have multiple maps, multiple layouts, uh, uh, all kinds of things within in those single projects. What that allowed us to do is more easily manage those projects. We didn't have, you know, 200 different MXD files to, to, to work through. Uh, we might have 200 shape files to work through, but that's another story. So what ArcGIS Pro does is kind of take that concept of projects uh, and modernizes it. So with ArcGIS Pro, we have APRX files, and that's where you're going to store all or, or access all of the maps and the layouts and data connections and toolboxes, uh, folder connections, address locators, pretty much anything that you would use in a single project uh, can be stored or accessed via uh, a project in ArcGIS Pro. So what this means is this is going to replace all of those MXD files, right? You won't need to have you know, multiple MXD files because a single project can store multiple maps, right? So you can create as many maps as you need inside of a project. Um, and those maps can then be tied into multiple different layouts. So you can have, you know, you know, 5, 10, 15, whatever number of layouts you want within a single project. Okay, there, there is no limit to the number of layouts. What that does is obviously simplify the management of some of this uh, information and how you access it. And, you know, did I grab the right MXD? Did I not? And all that. Because it's all going to be in this one or access via this one file, this one project file that you use within ArcGIS uh, Pro. Okay. And to access these resources that are stored in the project, you're going to use something called the project pane. So in ArcGIS Pro, they've gone to, as I mentioned before, this ribbon concept. And they've renamed 
I don't know why, but they, they felt the need to rename uh, what we were calling Windows. So your table of contents window, your, your um, catalog window, and all those windows uh, that were in ArcMap and Arc Catalog are now called panes and have slightly new names in ArcGIS Pro. Your project pane is the equivalent to your catalog window in ArcMap. So that, that project pane, it comes up uh, on the same side as the catalog window does in, in ArcMap, so it's on that right-hand side unless you move it, which you can, uh, somewhere. And it's from here that you're going to manage your project. And I'll, I'll demonstrate this here in a moment, but you'll access your maps. You'll create new maps. You'll connect to toolboxes, um, uh, connect to databases, um, connect to web resource. All of these things are going to be happening through this project pane, right, that you can manage and access this, this information. Uh, and just like in the catalog window, there are different ways you can view this. You can go to the outline mode, which is that tree structure, or you can go to gallery mode, which kind of gives you those thumbnails of information and gives you some idea to uh, select those. So let's take a look. I'm going to escape here out of PowerPoint for a moment. And we're going to go into, I'm going to start ArcGIS Pro. Uh, so down here at the bottom of my screen, you can see on my uh, taskbar, I've got the icon. So this is the icon. It's, it's a blue and white icon uh, that symbolizes Arc Pro. Uh, to me, that, that's supposed to be a globe. Um, to me, it looks like two poodles standing next to each other, but you know, that's, that's me, but that's the, the icon. And I'm going to uh, get Arc Pro started. Now, I've already got it set. The, the one thing you have to remember with Arc Pro is you do have to access a license. And right now, your licenses for Arc Pro are managed either through ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. So you'll have to uh, sign in to one of those two connection points, wherever your licenses are, to make sure you have a license. So when you start Arc Pro, it's going to ask you immediately uh, to open a, a project. So this is one thing that is, um, what's the word I'm looking for, somewhat problematic with Arc Pro in that you can't just open, immediately start with a kind of a blank map and just start adding layers. You always have to start with a project, either an existing project or create a new project. And we'll talk about what happens when you create a new project uh, in a little bit. But here is uh, a project, so I'm going to select it. It opens it up. Go ahead and expand uh, this to the full screen. Okay, so this is my project. Right now I have one map open. You can see over here in my contents uh, pane, this is the, the equivalent of the table of contents. And then over here is my project pane where I'm going to manage that data. So you can see here I actually have uh, three maps. One's a 3D map, one's a 2D map, and, and this other uh, 2D map is in here. I've got my toolboxes. Now, by default, when you open a uh, or create a new project, it's going to generate a new toolbox, a custom toolbox that's associated just with that project. There. I'm going to do databases. Uh, you can expand that. So here, again, you'll see it automatically is going to create, when you create a new project, it automatically generates a file geodatabase in whatever folder you've saved the project to that uh, is referenced to that specific project. You can also connect in other databases like I've done here. So here's a, a file geodatabase of, of data, which is what this is pulling from. Okay. Within this, I've got multiple layouts, so I can bring those in. Uh, to open them, now I can right-click on this and go open. So you'll see here my view area. This is where you're going to view your maps, uh, your layouts, your scenes, all here in this view area. And it, it's tabs, so you can just go tab back and forth between them, and you can have as many open as you want to. You can see I've got different, I've got 
or opening a second layout. I've still got this 2D map open over here. So you can bring in as many of these as, as you want. So here's my uh, central business district map. And again, if I want to open, I can also drag and drop. So I can drag it from the project pane and drop it into, I can do it quick enough, um, into my view area to open it. It's See, it's thinking now because it's a 3D scene. It's going to take a little bit to open. Uh, but you're accessing all of this through, and while it's even thinking, I'm even able to go over here and do uh, do other things. So there's styles, so your symbology, there's a connection to a web service, uh, web server, ArcGIS server connection in there, folder connections. So all of this is part of a project, and this is how you're going to access all of your, your various uh, resources through this and if you want to create new say a new map right you just right click on this in the the project pane and go new map now do not confuse maps with layouts so maps are equivalent to data frames in ArcGIS Pro a map is a data frame so um, layouts are, are layouts okay So as it's creating this new map, it's going to bring in, and, and I'm pulling in an Esri online base map, which while doing a webinar, so that's part of the reason it's getting taxed so much. But, you know, then from here I can start bringing in um, new data. Now there, if you go up here at the top, you'll see your project tab. This is where you can go in and manage things like options for your project. So if I click... Uh, there and go down to options, right? I can go in and, and set up certain options for this given project. So I've got some basic settings for the project, such as the home folder, default database, uh, default toolbox. I can set project units. You know, what distance units do I want to use in here? Uh, area units, angular units, and so on. Uh, this There is something down here that you'll want to, to pay attention to if you start utilizing the 3D uh, capabilities of Art Pro, and one of these, uh, what this is, is your 3D symbology. So when you start talking about displaying 3D and extruding data, right, to get the height uh, or depth of your data, well, what units are you going to to do that with? The default is is meters. Um, if you're here in the U.S., you want to use U.S. survey feet. Uh, you can check that. So that would give us when you extrude buildings or extrude uh, 3D symbology to the proper heights, you can make sure you have that option uh, checked here within your, your project. Uh, these other settings are general application settings. So these wouldn't be project sp specific. These current settings and unit settings are all project specific. The general, the map scene, all these others here are to the application itself. So these would be applied for all projects that you happen to open uh, for yourself. These up here are project specific uh, options that you can set. Okay. Again, you can kind of see this whole ribbon interface. So I said, a project is going to hold multiple items. This is the nice thing, I think, about Arc Pro. One of the things I really like is the, the fact that we can put all of this stuff that we work together in a project in one location so we're not having to hunt and find, well, where did that MXD go? Where did that toolbox go? Where did my database go? It's all set here into the, the project uh, so that you've got it in one location to control access to those sources in, in all that. So all the things that you have in catalog um, in Arc Map in the catalog window you can bring in here except you don't you're not limited to that single map. Like I said, you've got multiple maps, multiple layouts, multiple database connections, multiple folder connections, all of that here. And these are, are referred to as project items. Okay, so these are the things you can access from uh, the a given project. And then these are saved when you save the, the project. Now, having said that, one thing that is similar to a project um, 
and a map document is that a project does not directly store the data. So that APRX file itself doesn't store your shape files, your geodatabases, um, your, your address locators, whatever. Uh, it just stores the pointers that should allow access to that. So it's just like an MXD and that. So don't just think, well, you can email somebody a project file and, and have that come across. It still have to have access to your data, just like with an MXD. That hasn't hasn't changed. That's the, the same there. Okay. The other thing we can access through that project pane is our portal. Now, a portal is is either going to be ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. Um, portal for ArcGIS, for those that may not be familiar with it, is is basically an, a um, locally installed version of ArcGIS Online. So it's a, a version of ArcGIS Online that you install on your own local servers. Now at 10.3, uh, Arc, Portal for ArcGIS is part of ArcGIS Server. It's one of the things included with that. Prior to 10.3, you had to get it separately. But um, this is where you can access web resources and pull those in, either within the groups you're a member of, your organization, or um, ArcGIS online or portal in, in general. So again, kind of going back into Arc Pro, that would be this second tab over here within the project pane. So this first button is all of the content that I have access through via my organization connection to ArcGIS online. I'm not, that's what I'm using. Uh, then I can go whatever groups my username is a member of, right? So I can see other groups uh, that are in here. So there's Florissa Leadership Group. If they have any data published, I can double click and see what data they have available. I can use in my map. And I can go back up here to the back button to go back up. I can look at EGIS, see what's published just through the EGIS group, so on. Then this last button is all portals. Okay, so this would be all of ArcGIS Online. So this would be like going to the, the Add Data button in ArcGIS uh, and ArcMap and going to Arc Online. Um, and then you'd have to do a search. It doesn't populate it with everything in there anymore, which is, this is kind of not intuitive. Right, so I do a search on aerials, and now this is all the data that has aerials as a keyword that I can access and, and bring in. I'm not going to bring these in, but that's shared out there, right? So I can now add these as layers into my maps into ArcGIS Pro. Okay. And then if I get any errors or other notifications that come up with my project, they'll show up here. Uh, these are not saved. These only deal with the session of Arc Pro you currently have open. Uh, but the, So they get cleared out the minute you close down. But any other errors, if you get an error trying to connect to a portal and bring in data, It'll pop up here. If you get some other errors, they'll pop up in this notification area within the project pane. Okay. And to switch to the different views, this is the gallery view and the outline view. So if I did want to go in, I've selected maps, I go to gallery view, right? This is, takes me into those, those tabs. Get in here. And then, of course, also from this project pane, I can get in, I can view the metadata. So, again, just like the catalog uh, window in ArcMap, we can get in and do that. I can copy this map, uh, convert it to a 3D scene, convert that to a base map, rename it. So, all of these things happen within, and of course, where you click, you're going to get different um, options depending on what you click on, right? So. And by default, Arc Pro is going to utilize the um, the Esri item description metadata uh, source, but you can again change that to use ISO or anything. So uh, we did get uh, one question in from from Rachel here. It says, does all data have to be published to ArcGIS Online, or can you use it directly from SDE? Absolutely, Rachel, you can definitely use it uh, directly from SDE um, 
or from a file geodatabase or a um, um, shape files uh, or CAD files um, and so on. So the only thing uh, it does not currently support and probably will not support is the personal geodatabase. So good, good question on that one. Uh, but you'd have to establish those connections over here in the project pane. So if you wanted to connect uh, to a new database, if it's an SDE database, you'd go to new database connection and then fill in, you know, whatever your connection. And I don't have a SDE database to connect to to show you, but you'd fill in this connection information, and then it would establish that here within the project pane. Okay, so that's, uh, so Sean asked a good question here. Will the project attempt to copy database connections uh, like with a file geodatabase? Um, that is a very good uh, question. So let me, let me get in here and talk about creating a new project in a project and then using it as a project template and how that will work. And I think that'll end up answering your question there, Sean, um, in there. So when you go to start a new project, if you don't have any projects at all, you've got to create one. Well, these are going to have to be based on a template. Now, Esri provides several templates for you, uh, the blank, the global scene, local scene, map in there, but you can then create your own. What these templates are going to do is define some of your database connections, layouts, um, and also create project uh, folders. So when you do this, it's going to, when you create a new project, so here's a project that has been created, uh, it's automatically going to create a folder and then put certain things in it. So it's going to create a new geodatabase for that project, a file geodatabase. So anytime you create a new project, it automatically creates a file geodatabase with that project name. Okay, uh, it's also going to create a custom toolbox with that project name. Okay, it does that automatically for you. Now, if your template references or has a connection to another file geodatabase, right? Another file geodatabase. In this is this is a I'm not sure if it's a glitch or, or what it is, but instead of keeping that connection to that existing file geodatabase, it's going to actually create a copy of that file geodatabase within the project folder. Okay, so for here's let me do this as an example. I'm going to close down uh, this. So I've got this project. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay. So right now, this is referencing the Tripville geodatabase, as you can see here, that's on my E drive in the GIS folder and the final project data folder. Right. So that's where this is referencing. If I turn this, say I want to use this and the templates, the, the layouts and all that as a uh, template file, right, I can go over here to share and make this a project template. Okay. Then it opens over here the create project template pane uh, over here, and I can choose where I'm going to save this. So I'm going to save it to a location. I'm not op uploading it to ArcGIS Online. So I'm going to save this to my project templates. Call it webinar sample. Put in a summary. Dang it. Need to learn how to type. Analyze it. No errors were found. And so I'm going to create the template.
So it's now generating my template file, which is, here we go, um, got the aptx extension. Okay. And as part of that template, it's actually generating a, a project package. Uh, so it's packaging everything together. Here, all the layouts, the maps, uh, database connections, all of that's being packaged in here together. Okay, so it successfully created it. So I'm going to go ahead and close Art Pro for the moment and then reopen it. And it will create a project from scratch. Okay. So I'm going to go over here. So here's the, it automatically, because I saved it into the, the default project template folder, here is the project template that I just created. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to choose where I'm going to save this project that I'm creating. So I'm going to go to my E drive and GIS and call it Webinar Demo. Why is it giving me an error? Okay, I don't know what it was weird that way, but anyway. Uh, then I have the option to let it create a new folder entirely for this project, which I'm going to leave checked. And I'm going to go, okay. So you can see it's opening up the brand new project. It's got the same maps open and layouts that I had open in the original project that I used to create uh, the template from. But if you go over here to my database connection, so notice there's my project. There's the demo database. And there's the Tripville database. But what you'll should notice is that it created a copy of that in the demo folder. Okay, so it created a copy. That's not the same database that the original project, the template was created from is. It made a copy of that file geo database. So now I have two copies of that. And if I go here to GIS, there's the demo folder. Right, there's the My Project folder, and there's the Tripville database. Well, the original one of these was in the Final Project folder. Here, there's the Tripville Geo database. So, uh, kind of to answer your question, John, is it will create, if your template has a, a re reference or a connection to a file geo database stored on a mapped drive or a uh, local drive, it, when you start a new project based on the template, it creates a copy of that file geo database. I don't know why it does that. That doesn't make sense to me, but that's how Esri has it set up to do it now. Okay, like I said, you can see that. And then again, here is <clears throat> all of the stuff it went ahead. So there's the project geo database it automatically created. Um, Right there with the My Project. Here's the My Project APRX file that got created. Um, template. So it automatically sets up these things based on that that template. Now the other thing you can do that prevents it from making all those copies, uh, if you want to create, you can open an existing project and then do a save as. And if you do a save as. Uh, it keeps all the current connections as they are, doesn't make copies, but just starts a new project uh, based on whatever <clears throat> the existing project you have open has set in there. So that's one way to avoid making those copies of data so you don't end up with multiple copies of the same database. Um, it doesn't do that with SDE. It doesn't make copies. But then I've also heard um, that the, uh, the database connections to SDE have to be recreated 
because they don't carry over properly when you use a template that has SDE connections in it. So you'd have to reestablish those connections, which is similar to what you have to do in um, uh, ArcMap with a map document if somebody opens it that doesn't have that connection established already on their machine. So about the same there. Okay. So uh, if you use one of the Esri templates, like I said, it, it, it comes with these four. Whoops, hit the wrong button. Uh, the map is the map template is used just for 2D data to start with. It comes with a 2D map, a blank 2D map that you can add uh, to. Now, again, you can always add a new 3D map to it later and add other layouts and things uh, to build upon that, but it just starts with that open blank uh, 2D map. Uh, the global scene does a 3D map that includes it uses the globe for, for large areas. The local scene does a 3D map that's a, a local uh, scene, similar to what you'd get with arc scene in there, and then the blank has nothing, and you get to add whatever you want to with it. So those are the templates that come out of the box with, with Esri uh, there. And again, you can, as I just showed you, customize those um, as well. So now... What should be coming in uh, ARC uh, Pro 1.2, which is supposed to come out sometime the first quarter of next year? I've heard somewhere in February is a release date, but uh, can't uh, guarantee that. Um, well, first thing, ARC uh, Pro 1.2 is supposed to support Windows 10, so it's supposed to be compatible with Windows 10. Uh, 1.0 and 1.1 and 1.1.1 are currently not officially Windows 10 compatible. Uh, it will install on Windows 10, but you may encounter some issues with some of the functionality if you run it on Windows 10. Uh, supposedly, it'll have data-driven pages, so we'll be able to produce atlases and map books with it. Uh, uh, the ability to generate mobile map packages, so you can load those into mobile devices that uh, potentially use Collector or, or one of the other Esri uh, mobile apps or your own custom applications if you're building any of those. Uh, they'll be adding charts and graphs in there, the ability to do those, which isn't in there. Uh, increased integration with ArcGIS Online, primarily to make use of some of their analytic services that they publish through ArcGIS Online. Those will have direct integration uh, with uh, 1.2 of ArcGIS Pro. And then the ability to publish and use vector tiles uh, for use in base maps and things like that. Um, in there. So got a question from Carolyn uh, Fritz here. Uh, can you use custom add-ins? Uh, yes and no, Carolyn. Uh, you can create custom add-ins, but not in Python. ArcGIS Pro currently does not support Python add-ins. They have to be .NET add-ins. You know, those .NET add-ins can, can use Python scripts. Uh, what not, but um, you know, it cannot be a straight Python add-in like you have in ArcMap and Arc Catalog. So, but uh, .NET does work. And I don't know if they're going to add Python add-ins later or if they're going to keep it limited to .NET. I I'm not sure about that. Okay. So with that, let's, that's a good thing. Let's go ahead and open it up to uh, some questions. Any other questions? about projects or in Arc Pro or Arc Pro in general? Okay, well, I'm hearing quiet here on our end. Sean asks, is there a way to disable the file geodatabase copy behavior? Uh, yes and no, Sean. You can if I go back here into Arc um, Pro. If you go under Options, and under 
the general, you can set it so it uses the same default geodatabase and toolbox uh, for all projects, um, so it doesn't create new ones. However, if you reference a different geodatabase or toolbox that, than the default you specified here, it will currently always copy. There's no way to, to disable that short of just not including that connection in your template. Um, and does it copy anything else like scripts? If they're in, if they're a toolbox, if the scripts are referenced, uh, hit the cancel here. If the, the scripts are referenced in a toolbox connection that's up here, then yes, it will copy that, that over. So we got a lot more questions uh, coming in here. Jerry, can it consume OGC services, WMS, WFS, etc.? Yes, uh, you would set that up uh, in here as a uh, web connection, a server connection here. So it would be a new it'll do WMS, WMTS, and ArcGIS server. So those are the ones that it currently supports. So. Uh, can it use index searches for ArcGIS, S, uh, yeah, Arc SDE, file itineraries? Um, as far as I know, if you have uh, feature classes or tables indexed in Arc SDE, when you do the search up here, so if I select a geodatabase, and I do the search up here, it's going to use those index searches. Uh, Rachel Patterson says, if the project creates a copy, all changes will not or will be in the copy and not in the original database. That is correct. Uh, if it does make the copy, if you make changes, it, it does it in the copy, not the original. And that, that's one of the things. And I've already uh, submitted a idea to Esri. It's on ideas.arcgis.com that says not to do that and <laughs> not to make that copy on there for that very reason. Um, so uh, David asks, um, or says that he's very disappointed it will not read personal geodatabases. I store much of my data in that format. Any chance this will be added? My guess, David, is no. And this is just my guess. It has, I'm not, not an official word from Esri on this at all, but my guess is no. Uh, Esri seems to be trying to make the personal geodatabase go away uh, because as it is, you can't publish to ArcGIS Online or to ArcGIS Server from a personal geodatabase either. Um, and due to the restrictions of personal geodatabases, because they're built on Microsoft Access, they are becoming, um, I guess, problematic due to size restrictions and performance issues there. So they, you know, they want everybody to use either a file geodatabase or an SDE geodatabase. Uh, so Jim puts out a general question: uh, roughly what percentage of ESRI user communities moved to ArcGIS Pro in their daily production work? So Jim, do you want me to respond to that, or are you trying to get people to respond in the chat? Uh, on whether they have moved over to that either. Uh, well, I'll let folks respond in the chat if they've done that. I can tell you that um, the percentage is relatively small because of the limitations right now, because the fact it doesn't work with topologies, it doesn't work with geometric networks, uh, it doesn't have data-driven pages, it doesn't do graphs and reports yet, that the number is probably less than 10% um, that have moved over because of those restrictions. Um, with that, um, I will say this, this is, and David kind of referred to that uh, about another year or two. My guess is that Art Pro probably still has at least a year before it's really ready for main production work. Um, and But in three to five years, it's going to completely replace Art Map and Art Catalog. 
and that is again solely my guess and and um, within uh, based on my experiences working with it and things I'm hearing through the, the grapevine but said not 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 an official Esri word on that very good so any other questions Uh, okay, so uh, Nathan uh, is having some issues trying to publish feature services from Arc Pro, which is limiting their conversion. Uh, what kind of, that, that's interesting, I haven't encountered that yet. Are you publishing to ArcGIS Online or to ArcGIS Server? Or both? Or Portal? I guess that's another one. Online. I haven't encountered that, uh, but be interested, in the, uh, Nathan, if you could send me a little bit more information about your issue, I'd like to do some testing and see if I can recreate that and figure out what the, the problem may be. Okay, so any other questions? Okie dokie. Well, uh, I'd like to point out uh, that we do have, or I do have some uh, actual classes on ArcGIS Pro coming up. Uh, doing most of these is instructor-led, uh, on-site. Uh, it will hopefully be expanding to um, online classes as well. But for right now, I've got uh, one in February coming up in Atlanta. Uh, one in March in Raleigh, North Carolina, and one in March in Daphne, Alabama. Uh, we also have uh, another free webinar coming up on January 11th, which talks about creating 3D maps in ArcGIS Pro. So hopefully you'll uh, have an opportunity to attend that. So uh, with that, unless there are any more questions, uh, and if you think of any questions after the fact, please feel free to Email them uh, over to me, and I'll try to respond to those. But in the meantime, I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season, has a joyous and happy uh, new year. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next webinar. Uh, and Rachel did have one question. Do you have the cost of the classes published? Uh, yes, uh, most of those uh, classes are, are those two-day cla two classes are right around uh, $800. It, uh, the one in Raleigh is actually done through NC State, so they control the pricing on that one, but the others are mine. They're about, I think they're between seven and $800 for the two-day class. On site, you get a copy of my book, uh, 30 days of free phone email web support. And I do offer discounts to groups that send more than one people or ERISA. If you're a ERISA member, I can give you a discount on that too. So just reach out to me if you're, you're interested. Okay. So with that, guys, uh, we'll go ahead and call it. Uh, look forward to seeing you all again in the future. And have a wonderful and joyous new year.